Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to my first ever YouTube video. I've been wanting to make a long form video wherein I can share my slightly modified telescope setup. So today we're diving into my modded National Geographic 90 by 1250 Maxitov telescope. It's a mouthful I know, but stick with me, this thing a be is a beast. And I've been having a blast tweaking it. Let's get into it. The scope itself comes specifically from the National Geographic brand. I've also seen another type of this scope which is just a bit smaller and is also I think it was a reflector telescope but I'm not sure. Mine is a Maxitov telescope and I absolutely love it because a Maxitov telescope doesn't need a lot of collimation so it's not a big thing to worry about. Alright so when I first got this scope it already came with this viewfinder, so that is nothing that I upgraded. I think it it is perfect, but I hate the laser viewfinders because I always forget to turn them off, which costs me a battery. But that's just my problem. The telescope also comes with a handbox, which you can plug in at the back of the mount. One very big design error in this is that you can do, you're supposed to use the mount with batteries but the batteries it did not work for me after about two hours of using the batteries they were all done and the telescope mount was just moving way too slow and when i had a bit of weight because of i have my camera here the scope itself didn't go as it should go so i bought a power adapter to put into this power plug and it works perfectly with that. I'm talking about this power adapter. It's perfectly, it's perfect. It came from my local electronic store and it just fits right into the mount. And now I want to go to the biggest design flaw of this whole telescope. That is when I turn on the mount, if you look at the handbox, you always have to go to a stupid and annoying long setup process. I think National Geographic could have done a better job at this to implement a better memory. Also a problem with me was when after about one year of having the mount, the battery that keeps the time expired. Okay, so for the process itself, it just starts with asking you the, the time, your local time. It then asks you if you're on daylight saving, which I'm not. And then it asks you to select a country or city or a custom site. I'm just gonna select yeah, a random city. And then you have to, the, the plan is to place your telescope pointing exactly north. So this way it's south, but when I turn it like this, make it go north, yeah, just a bit. It doesn't have to be perfect the line, but this will work. And then I press okay. So that's the setup process. It's fairly easy and now you can actually already go just go to any object in the sky all right so with this telescope they came with two eyepieces one eyepiece is fairly good that's 12 millimeters it's pretty good but i don't use it often the other one that came with it was a bit bigger this one was 25 millimeters this one you can use fairly easy to also to do some star hopping. If you don't know what star hopping means, it's just basically navigating to the right stars by looking at what you're seeing through the eyepiece. You might say to the scope with this handbox to go to Mars, then it slews to Mars, but you're not seeing anything. So that might be because you didn't properly set up the telescope or you're just a bit a bit too much to the left or to the right with star hopping you can fix those errors i don't think it is necessary to upgrade and buy any more um, of these high pieces although one thing i would recommend to buy is this so this is a barlow lens it's called and it just makes your eyepiece zoom more even more in so you can place the eyepiece into this yeah so it goes through it and then you can place it in the eyepiece holder 
and it makes your uh, eyepiece way stronger. This is necessary to view the planets and view Jupiter and its uh, storm and its um, surface. Also, you can see Saturn's rings only by using this. You might see it with this, but it will be so very small. So that is actually about it when it comes to the basic stuff that comes with this telescope. So the most important things are to buy a power adapter. This is actually very necessary. You might think, yeah, batteries, it will work. It's meant to work, but trust me, you will buy this. You will run through these batteries in like a week. And then these batteries also cost a lot of money. So it's just cheaper to buy a power adapter. It's, it costs like five, five to seven euros, or I think. And then also, this is not that necessary, but this Barlow lens, I would recommend you buying it to make the astronomy observing more interesting and more fun. So this is another gadget I bought. It's basically a bit broken, but anyways, this is a solar filter that fits on the front of this telescope and it allows me to observe the sun without hurting my eyes. I think this is a very good uh, thing, ob uh, accessory to buy. So uh, I would recommend buying this. So yeah, after just have, uh, messing around with this scope, you can buy your first accessory extra. And this is very fun, I think. Okay, so you might have already realized when looking at pictures online, or if you have this scope yourself, I have a different focuser and that has a reason because I think the focuser that came with it is terrible, actually terrible. It doesn't work at all. My first design, I 3D printed this back, uh, this black ad uh, adapter for it. So it's easier to focus, but still, um, it's such a bad uh, focuser. And I think what I made here, I 3D printed uh, this and this to help it. Um, with those designs, with those prints, it is a bit better, but still. National Geographic could have done such a better job than this. Well, from 3D printing, let's go to the uh, first and second and third upgrade I made. So this was the first upgrade. The black thing to help focus i glued it on here which wasn't that smart because i can't take it off now but still then i made this and th i will explain this focuser a bit later in the video so watch watch till the end and you'll figure out why i have this here so my third actual um upgrade was a 3d printed phone bracket it is this one in particular and it just fits perfectly in this telescope mount. Look at this. Just like this. It works perfectly. I can fit my phone in here. Although, yeah, I'm filming right now, so it won't work. But this is... I 3D printed this. I will have this linked in the description. This is a very good upgrade. I love this very much. I'm happy that I made it. And yeah, I've, been, I've used it a lot of times. So with that out of the way, I would like to show you my fourth upgrade I made. This is an adapter that goes in here. It also fits perfectly. And you might think like, what is this? But this screw allows me to do something very cool. This actual screw allows me to connect my zoom camera to this mount. This was the most fun upgrade I've made because I use this so much to take shots of the moon and this is so absolutely handy i think i've even used this more than the telescope itself just because this is just such a good camera and yeah i recommend this this will also be linked down below and then moving on to my fifth uh, upgrade it is already and this one is pretty necessary because if you look at the bottom of this mount you can also use it on a tripod but i use it flat but as you can see, it I have these two white um, white foots that help me support the mount. It actually at the beginning it came with these black um, foots, and this one was placed right here. But I've made a uh, 3D printed these two to help it support even more. 
this was pretty necessary because with only three the mount um, regularly tipped over when I tried to move it so this is a great upgrade and for the sixth upgrade I made this will be very handy if you want to photograph um, stars with your camera and this goes right onto the telescope itself just like this just like that and yeah it allows you to have a better focus well while we're talking about cameras this is the dslr i use to photograph with my telescope if you watch this video i expect you to know how this works using a dslr and a telescope i mean it's pretty easy you have to buy a t2 ring adapter you can find those online very easy this uh is two parts is the it is a part that fits into your camera i have a canon eos 600d and then a t2 that screws into it and then it's very easy you just open the eyepiece and put in the telescope just like this so now we can come down to the third second second the biggest mistake of this telescope and that is the weight my camera is not heavy at all but still the mount regularly goes and dips a bit because of the weight of the of the camera this is so annoying and it makes my shots look terrible so this is definitely a big error for the mount it won't support the big weight the small weight of a camera it just supports the weight of the telescope and that's it so if you want to buy this telescope just keep in mind that you would have to sometimes help the camera move because otherwise it would just stay still and nothing will happen i can go around this i it it still works a bit it's not that uh, regular that it happens but still sometimes it happens so what i would recommend you is just sometimes help the mount help the camera move a bit forward and backward and then it will all work but what i mean with this is when you slew and move the telescope to the moon after a while of tracking it the scope will go with it but it will not be perfectly aligned anymore after about two hours or something the moon will just completely disappear out of your view which is a bit normal but still i think it can be better but it will work trust me it will work so this is the next thing that i bought for my telescope and it's so good i would definitely recommend it to buy this but only after you start using your scope for a while i bought this after like a half a year like six months of using it and this thing allows you to plug this into the handbox this into your laptop and with that you can control your telescope with a pc i won't go too deep into this but just know that when you buy this adapter i would have i will have it linked in uh, the description it comes with a very good manual that uh, shows you and teaches you how to use it with a software like this this is cartusiel it's very good and i would recommend you use this software when you buy the adapter so only buy this after like six months of using it and I also did this and this was so much fun and it really made me use my telescope even more. So now, now I can finally tell you what this focuser is and why it is so weird. Well, that all has to do actually with this mess of an unfinished project. You can see it on my TikTok account. I've made a, uh, three videos about it, but this is basically an electronic focuser connected with an Arduino and this allows me to connect a motor to it and focus um, the telescope by just typing some digit in on my PC um, this is still unfinished I will definitely make a video when this is um, completely uh, finished so stay tuned for that well so back to this adapter since I have this adapter this also allows me to make coding project like python programs on my pc to make the mount even better 
I've already made a bit of a, a program that allows me to get all the objects that are in this window so it can easily slew to the right object. I've also tried to make a plane spotting program that allows me to um, select a plane that is in the sky and the telescope will go to that plane and follow it. This still doesn't work yet and it's an unfinished project. I will definitely make a video about that in the future when that is finished, but I still need to buy a, some parts for that. Yeah, so that is basically it. Um, I want I will show you guys some pictures that I have made with this telescope. Although those are not a lot since I've lost like half of the pictures I've taken with a corrupted SD card. But um, those pictures will come into the uh, video now. Just a quick note, this um, DSLR camera, the Canon EOS 600D, I have Magic Lantern, it's called, on this installed. And this allows me to make the camera even brighter so that I can see stars that are normally um, invisible to the human eye. This is a very cool program. I would definitely link a video in the description to install it if you have an this kind of camera you can use it and um so yeah that that's something i would definitely recommend so yeah then this is actually the end of the video um i hope you uh, enjoyed it a bit english is not my native language i'm definitely learning a bit still a lot yeah a lot so uh, stay tuned for another long form videos and Give me a, a, a reaction in the comments, or what you think, um, if you have any tips on how I can improve and such. Um, next time I'll have a script prepared so you don't have to hear me struggle in English. But I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, at the end, I would definitely recommend this as your first scope. Definitely buy this. So that's it, guys. I'll see you. Follow my account, subscribe to my account, follow my TikTok channel, and that's it. Bye-bye.